Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, flute brewing two Chinese green teas. In this video, I'm gonna be introducing you to the flute brewer, and then we're gonna be using it to brew two new 2017 green teas. This video is gonna go under the tea wares and the single tea tastings playlists. If at any point in time you enjoy this video, then please give the video the thumbs up. The more thumbs in the air, the more tea videos are gonna come your way. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, then go click that button. It's Saturday. August in London, a bit of a cloudy day. As usual, I am way behind schedule, so I need to film this video, edit it, and put it online in the next few hours. And what I wanted to do today is introduce you to our new brewer. This is called the Flute Brewer. Let me show you it. This is an all glass brewer. We call it the Flute Brewer. I've looked online for other names for it. Some people call it the Tube Brewer. Other people, because of the, the, the handles, call it the Big Ear Brewer. If any of you have seen or know of the Beano, this is how old I am. The Beano is in like an English comic um, series. There was a character in the Beano called Plug, and Plug has very similar ears, so we're considering calling it the Plug Brewer. Some people at the bar, at the Mayleaf Bar, our staff, uh, they call it the Breaking Bad Brewer because it's kind of got that... Um, laboratory kind of feel to it. Whatever you want to call it, it's a really nifty new brewer that we have um, and it allows you to dispense of the Gong Dao base. So normally when you're brewing Gong Fu style, you would have your Gai Wan or your pot, you'd brew in there and then you would pour the uh, liquor into the Gong Dao Bay, the fairness cup, which would decant the tea and make it all fair so that everybody tastes the same thing. Well, with this and with our Connoisseur Tea Brewer, which is one of our best-selling items here. So this is the Connoisseur Tea Brewer. Both of these, what they allow you to do is brew Gong Fu style, essentially at your desktop without the need for a Gong Dao base. So it strips down your amount of teaware if you want more of a minimal session. So with the Connoisseur Brewer, the leaf goes into the top chamber, you pour the, the water in, and when the uh, tea is ready, you push the top button here, and it decants the uh, liquor into the bottom chamber. So this bottom glass chamber acts as the Gong Dao Bay, and then you can pour and you can continue to reinfuse throughout the day. We've done a video about this. I'll put a link in the description below. And with this uh, flute brewer, it's very similar in the sense that the Gong Dao Bay is already here. So the leaf goes into this chamber here, and this glass has some um, nice slits cut into it that act as a very fine filter. So you pour, you pour the water in over the leaves, you allow the tea to infuse, and once it's ready, you take the lid off, you very gently uh, pull up the glass uh, tube, and that will leave the tea liquor in the chamber below and keep the leaves ready, and you can put it in this glass lid. That keeps it nice and neat, and then you can pour and serve yourself. Really, really nice. We've been using it a lot, and it's a really nice way if you want a more stripped down tea session. The other great thing about this is it's all glass, which is a great thing. We love that, all glass. And also, it's really, really great for seeing the leaves, especially needle type teas. You know, the silver needles, or we're gonna be brewing a green needle tea uh, today, or longer leaves. Um, anything that you want to see that beautiful um, bobbing up and down when the leaves are brewing. So needle tea and longer leaves um, are really, really great. It's also good for, uh, especially good for green teas. You can brew any tea in this, but green teas are really, really good because it's made out of glass. It's not gonna hold the heat as, as, as much as some of the other um, materials and therefore it's not gonna stew the tea in any way but you can use it for anything. And the, the level of um, space in here for the tea to expand is pretty good. Um, I would say that this is more suited to needle and long shaped teas. Um, oolongs, ball rolled oolongs will work, but ball rolled oolongs tend to expand upwards and outwards. And so it's gonna get a little bit tight in here. So I use this predominantly for greens and black teas. But enough talking. Let's get to brewing. So I'm gonna be right back with our first tea. Okay, let's begin with our first tea. This tea is called Taihua Long Ding, also known as Naked Spring to us. This is one of our favorite green teas at the moment. Really, really fresh, really, really sappy. The essence of spring. That's why we call it Naked Spring. 
and uh, let's quickly scope this tea. So this is Kaihua Longding, the season. This was picked preaching Ming, which means it was picked before the 4th of April. So very early spring picked. This was actually picked on the 25th of March, 2017. The cultivar is the Ju Kung Jong cultivar, which is a cultivar not often used, or we haven't seen a lot of this cultivar being used. So it's an interesting cultivar, the Ju Kung Jong cultivar. The origin is in Kaihua, which is in Zhejiang province. Zhejiang province is on the uh, east coast of China, and it has a great reputation, right? Wonderful green tea growing province. It grows Long Jing, uh, which is Dragon Well. It grows... Um, Anji Bai Cha, which is a jade sword. So it grows classic, classic, really, really high quality green teas. But uh, Kaihua is kind of right on the border between um, two other provinces. So the Zhejiang province, uh, Jiangxi province, and Anhui province, all really amazing tea growing provinces. So it's right in that kind of um, uh, triangulation of those three provinces at the source of the Qianjiang River really beautiful beautiful area very very pure very very untouched picking on this is a rat is kind of buds and one leaf usually predominantly buds maybe buds and one leaf and the elevation for this is 1100 meters so that's your scope this is a really interesting tea and if anybody knows of the uh, famous Sichuan tea bamboo green or Zhu Ye Qing that uh, Zhu Ye Qing is a very very famous Chinese green tea commonly sold um, and it's called bamboo green and it comes from Sichuan province around Erme mountain and um, we've been looking to buy in bamboo green for, for many many years but every time I taste bamboo green I always find it lacks a certain level of depth or roundness it's very fresh it's very vibrant it has very similar flavor profiles to this Kaihua Longding in that it's it's kind of got a very raw green taste to it really really bright but I find that a lot of the bamboo green is a bit flat and a little bit over astringent. Um, and this tea is relatively unknown compared to the bamboo green. It's like the kind of unsung um, cousin of bamboo green. But I really, really recommend that you guys try it out. If you like bamboo green, try it out. Or if you're interested in these more fresh, buddy green teas, then this is a great one. For you to try. The story behind it is it supposedly was um, brought into this area of China and started to be produced in the 1950s when uh, somebody brought in this uh, Ju Kang Zhong cultivar for growth. Um, and so it's been growing for over 50 years, it's been produced for over 50 years, and it's quite amazing that it doesn't have more of a reputation, I think. Anyway, let's brew this. So I've got um, about five and a half grams of um, the leaf here. This Flute Brewer is, if you fill it to the top, 200 mil. So we're not going to fill directly right, right, right to the top necessarily. Um, so that's uh, 200 mil, which is the perfect, I think, nice gongfu um, size portion for brewing for yourself, but also brewing in uh, groups of, you know, a couple of people, up to four people, if you have the small cups. So I'm not going to rinse this tea. With green teas that I know the origin and I know that this has been produced perfectly, I don't uh, need to um, uh, rinse these teas. And also, I know how light and delicate these teas are. So I really want to maximize um, every single infusion I can. And the great thing about this brewer, as you can see, I'm going to show you quickly before I, steep, uh, before I uh, filter it out. Um, is that you can start to see it really brew and you're going to see those buds bobbing up and down um, with future infusions. Okay, so the color of the dry leaf was kind of nice, kind of clay green, um, a beautiful um, uh, slightly grayish green. And now that the water's hit it, it has brightened up and has become this kind of beautiful, um, bright, lime, zesty green. I will show it to you just so that you can see but yeah you can see it's a lot brighter a lot lighter I love the look of this tea I think it is a real looker this tea um, and I love the bamboo green uh, from uh, Sichuan I love the look of that tea but I always found that the flavor wasn't quite up to scratch okay so let's have a sniff of these wet leaves oh um, 
So there is a warmth to it, like a, a kind of summery warmth to it. Like a summer's day, um, it's got a little bit of um, green grapes. Flowers are there. We have like light flowers, lilies. Um, it definitely has um, those sweet, warm notes. But then the predominance is freshness. The predominance is bamboo, green bamboo, stems. Um, you know, uh, I've been kind of drinking a lot of wine recently or tasting a little bit more wine and tasting the difference between natural wine and um, so wine that has been uh, fermented with the grape skin and you get that kind of slightly stemmy, slightly more sappy, slightly more, I don't want to say sour, but it's got a little bit more um, raw in its uh, flavor. So I'm getting the, a little bit of vegetables as well. Like, so I'd get some, some courgettes or zucchini as they're known in the States. Um, green bamboo, lilies, grapes, Wonderful, great, great um, smell, great uh, bouquet. Here's the liquor, nice and light, kind of a citrine yellow, kind of those kind of gemstones. And the two teas that we're tasting today are gonna uh, are both light green teas. And it's interesting because when you start to to, to um, explore green teas in more depth, you notice that the more expensive green teas actually tend to be the ones that are very, very light. And it's all about, I find, with the really, really um, amazing, incredible top draw green teas. It's about having this real lightness, light touch, the light color liquor, the light lightness in the mouth, very bright, very kind of um, uplifting and delicate, very delicate, and yet full of aroma, full of aromatics that you tease out and has long length. And so that's the key. It's all about having the lightness, but the depth as well. And that's where you find really, really the top drawer green teas. So you can pour this obviously in small cups. The great thing about this brewer is that you don't need anything else. You can see how simple my setup here is. And I'm going to leave that on the side. So you literally, that's all you need when you're uh, tasting your tea. Okay, let's uh, give this a taste. First, let's think about texture. So as I said, light, but actually, it's, it's, I would say it's more medium body. It's, 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 it's got the thickness. So first impressions is very light, but it's definitely got the thickness and the aroma is starting to come through. This is all about um, springtime, spring cleaning. For me, this has a real kind of cotton fresh taste to it. You know, the smell of fresh sheets, you know, or uh, sheets that have been left out um, to dry in uh, the air, in like uh, clean air, hopefully, somewhere where there's uh, um, some, some grass and some flowers. And you just smell, it's got that linen cotton freshness to it. This is that, it's got that real fresh, this is like the ultimate kind of spring cleaning kind of taste. Some nuts, raw nuts, milky nuts, raw cob nuts, raw almonds, more cob nuts, which are kind of English hazelnuts, that very raw and milky. Sappy as well, I'm getting that bamboo. You know when you have like sugar cane or something and, and you have raw sugar cane, I don't know if you've ever had that before, and you chew on raw sugar cane, forget the sweetness of that, because obviously it contains a lot of sweetness, but that sappy, that sappy um, taste is definitely in this tea. And there is some fruit as well, but very light. And I would move it more into kind of star fruit with that interesting interplay. It's not apple-y, it's not, it's not so um, intense like apples, but it's got a little bit of that freshness. It's a real summer tea. Now, it does have astringency. With all of these green needle teas, you're gonna get astringency. Don't forget, this is the tip top first flush of the plant grown after the dormant period um, in winter. So it's filled with catechins, okay? It's filled with all of those, um, those um, compounds that will um, 
lead to some bitterness and astringency. And that's where I find that the bamboo greens from Sichuan fall short. This one, it's held it. It's got, it's, it's there, but it's elegant. It's definitely w uh, re restrained the amount of bitterness and astringency. I would say there's very little bitterness, but there is a certain astringency, a kind of drying, puckering sensation, which is again, very raw, feeling you know it, it, it suits the whole mood of this tea which is all about spring fresh raw um, and uh, that's what makes it so special you can again see how the buds are starting to now move further down and eventually they'll just be bobbing up and down there with uh, future infusions but this flute brewer really allows you to get a good view of the Good view of the leaves by, uh, by the way, I'm brewing with 80 degree water, <clears throat> 175 degree Fahrenheit water. So keep it cool. If you brew too hot with this, then you are gonna pull, pull out far too much of that astringency. And what's great here is, you, as you can see, with very little mess, I can be brewing this tea <clears throat> by myself or with friends and I've got my glass still with tea in it. I've got my next infusion. I've got my leaves all nicely in a row oh, with a nice diagonal, which was not intentional. Um, so this is the Breaking Bad style of brewing or the flute style of brewing. And um, I really love it. I really love this way of brewing, especially for green teas. Okay, let's give this another taste before we move on to our next tea. Green grapes are coming back, so I'm getting a little bit more of the sweetness of the fruit. Mm. But when I say green grapes, <clears throat> I'm talking about actually more the grape skin. So, you know, if you take grape skin, this is why it reminds me of those natural wines a little bit, because it's got that grape skin kind of taste. And it's now starting to really bring out more of the warmth. I'm getting those summer meadows. I'm getting the hot air. Um, I'm getting a slight kind of cut grass notes, but it's not green in the sense of lush, verdant green, like um, fresh cut grass, because it's actually earlier than that. It tastes earlier. It tastes more raw. It tastes younger. Um, it's really, really vibrant. Um, and yeah, <clears throat> a wonderful, wonderful tea to add to your collection and a great tea to brew in this flute brewer. Okay, quick smell of the empty, what's now a Gongdao Bay. And always the smell of the empty Gongdao Bay or cup is gonna be warmer. I'm getting more milk notes, nut milks, more flowers. Flowers are actually more perfumed than in the liquor. I'm getting a slight, slight strawberry note as well, which is interesting. It's the first time I've noticed that. Very ripe strawberries as well. So yeah, it's got a slight strawberry note, nut milks. Gorgeous, lovely. That's your first tea. That's Kai Hua Long Ding, also known as Naked Spring. Right, let's move on to our very special second tea. Second tea and the eagle-eyed amongst you will already know which tea we are tasting. This is Ho Kui, also known as Monkey King Green Tea or Monkey Picked Green Tea. And it is a Chinese classic green tea, very, very high echelon top draw green tea that is commonly given as gift tea because of its reputation. And whenever there's reputation, whenever tea commands a high price, you have to be careful that you are not paying for the tag, but you're actually paying for the quality of the tea. And that's my job here, to make sure that we source according to taste and not just according to looks or name. Now I have three Hokuis in front of me, three of them. I'm gonna give you a second to try to work out which one you think is the highest grade tea. I'll bring them over to you here. This is number one. You can take it a look. I'm not going to say too much. Number one. And number two. And finally, number three. Any guesses which one is the highest quality? Well, common knowledge would say 
that Hokwe should look more like this one here. Very, very flat, very, very thin, very, very delicate, wafer thin. You can see the light coming through it. Um, very, very green, extremely bright, extremely light green color. Um, and this is what most Hokwe looks like now nowadays. And it is a very high quality Hokwe, this one. Don't get me wrong, this is a high quality uh, Hokwe. Um, and uh, this is pretty much what you'll see in, the, in most uh, uh, shops, and it's a good quality tea. This one here is exactly the same as this one, but a year old. So you can see how, I mean, there's, I think there's no other tea which transforms as quickly or degrades as quickly as Hokwe. Hokwe just degrades super quickly. I would even say, you know, it has to be within a year of, 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 um, uh, of you buying it. Um, if it's being kept well by the seller, it's a very, very difficult tea to transport. It's a very, very delicate, pernickety tea. And you can see how much it has changed from one year to the other. So a year ago, this, uh, a year ago, the, the, this tea here, this tea here looked very similar to the other one. Um, in fact, almost identical. So the problem with Hokwe is, is the fact that it's so delicate. Now, the reason for that, part of the reason for that is because they, um, machine press it. So they take the, the, um, the leaves, they spread them out over mesh, and then they roll it with a, a roller. I say machine, it's still kind of done by hand, but it's, it's done over a roller, and that squeezes out all of the juice, brings it all to the surface, and makes a very flat, very transparent, or, or more transparent looking uh, leaf. And that's great because it makes a very beautiful color uh, um, leaf. It's a very pretty leaf. Um, and the flavor is there present for you when, as soon as you hit uh, water over it. The problem is that it squeezes out all of those juices. All of those juices are on the surface. There's no leaf in here for the juice to stay locked in, uh, in, in, in and be protected. And therefore, it degrades really quickly just by leaving it out. Even if it's in a pack, it'll start to degrade very quickly. And so this year, we were tasting lots of Hokwe's and I was a little bit nonplussed about what we were getting. They were okay, you know, some nice ones. Um, again, this is a very delicate tea. So even though these are large leaves, you have to use uh, a fair amount of them and they are, it, the flavor is very delicate and that's what's prized about it. It's that, again, that delicacy, that lightness whilst having a richness and depth. Um, and um, I just found that the samples that I, I was receiving was, were not good enough. Um, and then I tasted this one here. Now this one here is processed, is Hokwe processed, fully handmade, fully handmade way. And when I say that, um, that's a little bit, again, it's, it's, it's very difficult to say what's fully handmade compared to machine made. But basically what they do is they take each individual leaf and they put it through a little hole that has a little roller and that pulls the leaf through and crushes the leaf, but it doesn't flatten it out and it's not having the same power as a machine rolled leaf. And that means that the color doesn't look as pretty, but all of the juices are locked within this leaf and it means that you get a richer flavor and it also means that it lasts longer. So this is fully handmade Hokwe. We only got a very small batch of this. It is high, high priced tea. Um, so we've only got 10 kilos of this tea, I'll tell you. So it's very, very small batch. Um, and um, when I tasted it, it blew away all the other Hokwe's and I was mesmerized by it. So I just wanna show you these two quickly again together and then we'll get on with brewing. Um, so you can see, one, they look kind of almost similar in terms of shape, but you can see one of them is a fresh green color, dark, nice, dark, verdant green color, and the other one is looking a bit brown, gray, sad, and old. So, let's brew this tea, and we'll scope it at the same time. This is season is uh, spring 2017, um, and the cultivar is the um, Shoda cultivar, 
which is slightly larger leaves, uh, slightly longer. And the uh, origin, this is from Taiping. It's really important that you get these Hokways from the original uh, village area. This is uh, Xinming, Taiping uh, in um, Anhui province. This is uh, picking is bud and one, sometimes two. Uh, leaves and the elevation is around 700 meters for this so it's quite high elevation for that area right this is the first time I've tasted this tea since it's been received so this is actually my sample tasting I have not written my tasting notes so I'm coming in a little bit blind here but you can see the real joy of brewing this tea in the flute brewer Look at that, how it just gives all of the space for those leaves. There is no crammed up leaves here. It really allows all the leaves to quite happily <clears throat> have enough room to infuse. And that's really, really important. Okay, so marked difference, really a marked difference. And I have to say the first time I received this sample, um, I looked at it and I thought, oh, this doesn't look that good because of the fact that it's not as thin and as green um, but when I tried it blind tasting as always when we tasted it we picked this one out every single time and I had to find out why and I've got some footage I'll show you some video footage of them putting um, the leaves through the, uh, the small uh, holes so you can see how they make it differently compared to the machine uh, made Hokwe. As I said this tea is very delicate but has a lot of aroma. If you really, if you get in and start to explore it, it has so much going on. Um, let's see what it tastes like. Again, as I said, I haven't written my tasting notes for this, so this is completely blind. Really, really clear, the crisscross pattern. As you can see, it's been dried on the uh, sheets. It's got a really clear crisscross pattern. I'm gonna try to show you, it's even more clear than on most Hokways, I think because of the fact that it has not been laid out too thin. See if you can see the crisscross pattern there. Oh, the smell coming up from the wet leaves is great. Let's have a little sniff of these wet leaves. Oh, so, so rich. This is what's, what I found was very different compared to the average hokways out there which were too delicate this one is rich it's bursting with torn fresh green leaves torn grass very verdant slightly uh slightly nutty uh, has a almost reminiscent of a long jing or a dragon well or imperial green has that kind of slightly nutty not as much but it's there green chestnuts and orchid really really strong sweet orchid aroma the color of the liquor, I will show you. Again, you're looking for lightness, you're looking for, for um, brightness, you're looking for almost kind of translucent. It's that that you're looking for. You don't want rich color, you don't want cloudy tea uh, for this one. You really want it to be light, bright, and um, almost fluorescent. You can see some of the hairs floating around you can see that this was young picked tea. Yeah. Minerality, I'm getting chalk. I'm getting almost like a slight kind of coconut to it, but very, very light, very, very light, raw, white coconut flesh. I'm getting sunflower seeds. So that, those kind of milky notes with chalk. I'm not getting so much of the grass at the beginning. I'm picking up the orchid through the nose. Flowers, definitely. Definitely white flowers. Some sappiness, some vegetal notes. Again, similar to Naked Spring, a little bit of that kind of courgette or zucchini flesh um, um, smell, aroma. But really um, milky, and I always find this with Hokui. There's a kind of slight milky, uh, a predominance of milkiness, much uh, more than any other green tea. You're getting those nut milks, you're getting those raw uh, nuts. 
the texture. I would say it's lighter. It's lighter than the Naked Spring, which is what you'd expect. It's lighter. I would say it's, it's a light tea. Really, really refreshing. The chalky dryness on it is great as well. Great uh, minerality. Nothing too rocky or slaty. It's got that, that gentle, chalky um, um, texture. Almost slight caramel notes just in there as well. Very, very light. Fudgy kind of caramel notes. Especially in the empty cup, especially when I'm sticking my nose in. Wow, I'm getting a lot of fudge and caramel. That has really surprised me actually. Ooh. Vanilla fudge, amazing. Green coconut, coconut water almost, like, you know, fresh coconut water. And a slight bit of that sappy bamboo kind of uh, taste that we had before with the Naked Spring, but much, much less. Okay, second infusion. Notice that I do brew these quite strong. You know, don't be uh, fooled by the size of these leaves. In fact, you're, because of the fact that they're such large, light leaves, you're using very small amounts. So I'm using uh, about four grams of this. It looked like a lot more, right? But that was only four grams. They're very, very delicate. So, you know, gram for gram, you're actually using less leaf uh, generally when you're brewing Hokwe. And therefore, you need to brew it a little bit longer. Um, because it needs to have a little bit more extraction. The color has become a little bit more green now, but again, really clear, really vibrant, really bright. Almost got a slight kind of blue tinge to it. Um, it's so kind of fresh looking. Okay, second infusion. Cheers, everyone. Mmm, orchids coming out more. something green, green sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds rather, not sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds with that green um, skin. And the grassiness is there, but it's very, very light. It's really, really, really like spring meadows, um, but nothing too in your face. Certainly no like freshly mowed grass, none of that. It's very, very, very um, light, untouched, just the breeze of, 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 of grass, just, you know, walking through a field, just getting a little bit of uh, the breeze of it, not like sticking your nose into it. It has something else that I can't quite put my finger on, which is why I'm stalling. Vine leaves, potentially. I think it's vine leaves. You know, when you get those Greek vine leaves, those stuffed Greek vine leaves, um, it has that kind of slight vine leaf tang to it too, which is really great. And the smell, again, more of the warmth, more of the vanilla notes, some of those pumpkin seeds, and definitely some caramel and fudge in there, which was quite a surprise. This is a high, high grade Hokwe. Really, really, the handmade stuff, in my opinion, may not look as pretty, but it is much more flavorful than your average high quality um, machine made hokwe. That's not to say that we won't stock some of this. I do love this tea as well. Uh, if we can find some good stuff, we will get some in. Uh, this was really a small batch, 10 kilos, just because I love it so much. So there you go. Two green teas brewed in the flute brewer. If you guys are interested, these are now in stock and really, I think a really nice minimal way to brew tea, especially these lovely light green teas. That's it tea heads. If you made it to the end of this video, then please give the video the thumbs up. Check out our YouTube playlist and let us know if there are any videos that you'd like us to make. If you're ever in London, then come and visit us in Camden to say hi and taste our wares. If you have any questions or comments, then please fire them over. Other than that, I'm Don from Maley. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.